An important piece of information for any routing protocol is the metric. The term metric refers to how to measure something. For example, miles and kilometers are metrics that measure distance. OSPF uses cost as its metric. It determines that some links are better than others. Better links cost less to get a packet to its destination. Each router will run the SPF algorithm to find the best paths through the network. OSPF considers the path with the lowest cost to be the best. The best paths are then offered to the routing table. This is a pretty good system. Unfortunately, there's a problem in modern networks. But before we get to that, we need to understand how OSPF calculates a link's cost. And that is all about bandwidth. Each link has a bandwidth. For example, we have four links with bandwidths of 10 meg, 100 meg, 1 gig, and 10 gig. In OSPF terms, the higher the bandwidth, the better the link. There is also a reference bandwidth. This, by default, is 100 meg. Back in the early days of OSPF, 100 meg was considered to be a fast link. To calculate the cost of a link, OSPF divides the reference bandwidth by the link bandwidth. So the cost of a 10 meg link would be 100 divided by 10, which is 10. The 100 meg link would be 100 divided by 100, which is a cost of one. Now here's where it gets interesting. The one gig link is 100 divided by 1000. This should be 0.1, but OSPF only uses whole numbers. So this cost turns out to be one. The same thing happens on the 10 gig link. Can you see the problem? Modern networks have links much faster than 100 meg, but the cost of them always comes out to one. Let's go back to the original topology now. Before, I didn't show you the bandwidths of the links, only the costs. Let's add the bandwidth now. See how the path that OSPF selected is not the best path. The best path should use the 10 gig links. But because the cost of each link is one, the best path has a total cost of four. This is a higher cost than the worst path, which has a cost of two. So we need to do something about this. The solution here is changing the reference bandwidth. Let's connect to a router and see how that's done. Before we change anything, let's check the current reference bandwidth. There's no guarantee that it's at the default settings because someone else could have come along and changed it for us. So to do that, we use show IP OSPF. Here is where we see this value, and this confirms that it's 100 meg. Any of Cisco's routers and switches running iOS will use 100 meg by default. Other vendors, and even some of Cisco's data center range of switches may have a different value. I'm now using show IP route OSPF to see only the routes that OSPF has learned. Do you remember which value is the metric? It's the second value in the square brackets. So the costs here are two, two, and three. Keep that in mind and we'll see how they change later. Now to change the reference bandwidth. We do this under the router OSPF configuration hierarchy. The command we use is auto cost reference bandwidth, then followed by our value. The value is in megabits per second. I'll enter 1 million, which is a terabit. I've chosen a really high value as it's much higher than any of our links. Now, as the router here says, this value needs to be consistent across all of our routers. We can then confirm this change with show IP OSPF. It has definitely been updated, which is very good. And looking at the routes again, we see much higher costs. So we know the change we've made has worked. If we made this change to the routers in our topology, the costs would now look like this. Big difference, right? How might this scenario change things? There are two routers at different sites connected by a 100 meg WAN link. They connect to this link with a gigabit 00 interfaces. Now how will this affect OSPF? Based on the defaults, OSPF will assume that there is one gig of bandwidth between these sites. It has no way of knowing what the service provider's limit is. So it will base the cost on one gig of bandwidth. This is inaccurate and depending on the rest of the network, it may lead to poor routing decisions. 
So we can tune this by telling the router the real bandwidth of the link. Under the interface, we can enter bandwidth 100. When we look at the interface again, we can see that the bandwidth has changed. Unfortunately, I set it to 100 kilobits, not 100 megabits, but you get the picture, I'm sure. I want to be clear about one thing, though. The bandwidth command only supplies the router with more information. It does not change the actual bandwidth of the link. On occasion, the reference bandwidth and the bandwidth statement won't meet our needs. In a case like this, we can set the cost on an interface manually. We might see this if there's a fault on a link, and we would prefer to use a more reliable path. Or maybe it's a backup link, and we only want to use it if necessary. In cases like those, we can set the OSPF cost on the interface to be really high. This would cause some other path to be preferred. Under the interface, we can use the IP OSPF cost command. In this case, I'm setting the cost to 5000. You can put these new skills into practice here. Work out the cost on each link, and then the path that R1 will take to each destination.